Your sense of self is especially acute when it comes up against something it doesn't want, or when its desires are, are thwarted. That's when you become particularly aware of the fact, yep, that's me, and I want this, and I'm not happy about that, or whatever. When things are going pretty smoothly, the sense of self is there. It's just it's more diffuse. And if you're not paying careful attention, you might miss it. This is why there's that mistake that says, all you have to just do is just be the knowing, and you'll be apart from any self. And that's the purpose of the practice. Because there will still be desires in that knowing, or well, the knowing will be aware of the desires. The problem is that they get excused to say, well, that's just the natural functioning of the body. It doesn't have any impact on the knowing. But there's still that seed of an identity in there. And so there's still the seed for more suffering. One of the reasons why the Buddha has you focus on pain as a large issue is because your sense of self or whatever identification you may have is going to become very clear. All your clingings are going to become very clear. The problem is dealing with pain. In the very beginning, it's hard to take. I mean, it's the definition of pain almost. What puts a squeeze on the heart? What makes things hard? And so you need another place to identify with. So instead of identifying yourself as the person who has the pain, find some spot in the body that's not pained. And there'll be part of the mind that wants to keep going back to the pain, and you have to say, nope, 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 we're going to stay right here. And you can use a little bit of not-self thinking here. There's a pain in the leg, pain in your hip. Just say, it's not me right now. And it's good to have the sense that you have many different potential senses of self that you can choose. Because that's the way it is. Simply that we're not all that aware of it. We think there's just the one me that keeps coming up. And it's pretty, pretty clearly identified. But if you look at it carefully, you begin to see the identification varies with the desire. So right now we're going to be sitting for an hour, so the desire is how can I get through the hour without suffering from the pain? And for that purpose, just, you know, just identify with some other part of the body as a first step. Breathe into that part of the body in a way that feels comfortable. If you can't find any spot in the body that's not connected with tension around the pain, start with the area, the air around the body, the space around the body, and then think of it permeating in. And then as there is a sense of well-being, then you think of it spreading. So think of the breath energy spreading through the pain. You stay in your home base that's not the pain itself, but think of the comfort that's coming from there radiating out and going through the pain. If it feels like the pain is a wall, change that perception. Remind yourself that the atoms of the body are mainly made out of space. So the breath energy can flow right through them. And besides, the pain itself is not something physical. It's something that's there in relationship to the body, but it's not the same thing as the body. Here you're already beginning to work with your perceptions, because the perceptions are the big problem. These are the perceptions we cling to over and over and over again, and they seem to be confirmed by our experience of reality, so we hold on to them tight. even though. The perception actually causing us a lot of unnecessary mental suffering. So when you finally do get around to being ready to look at the pain directly, and you ask yourself, what in here am I identifying with? Sometimes that question by identification is a little bit too direct, so you do it in an indirect way. Say, what are the perceptions here? 
And when a perception changes, does it have an impact on the sense of suffering in the mind related to the pain? If you feel you know the pain is out to get you, okay, that immediately creates a sense of you in there. Whether the pain has invaded your space, and there's a you there. Can you change those perceptions? In John Mahabha talks about trying to see the distinction between body, feeling, and awareness. Which are the three components of our concentration? But here we're trying to take them apart to see even though they are in the same place, they are different things. You can think of the analogy of the radio waves going through the room here. The radio waves from Tijuana, the radio waves from San Diego, from Los Angeles, and they're all on different frequencies. They're in the same space. And the radio here could pick up any of them, depending on how you dial the frequency. So think of the pain and the awareness and the body as being there in the same space but different frequencies. And when you begin to realize that the pain and the body are two separate things, you begin to realize the pain moves around a lot more than you originally thought. You thought it was kind of a dull ache right there, and it had a particular location. But now the boundaries begin to get a little bit more fluid, and you can start chasing it around. And perceive it as running away from you, rather than coming at you. What you're doing here is you're going through the steps of breath meditation related to the feeling. That tetrad that starts out with breathing in a way that gives rise to rapture, breathing in a way that gives rise to pleasure. In other words, finding the spot in the body that feels good. And then breathing in and out sensitive to metal fabrication, i.e. your perceptions and your feelings. How are the perceptions having an effect on you? How are the feelings having an effect on you? How, how do they get mixed together to have an effect on the mind? And then you find a way to calm that. When you're dealing with the pleasure of concentration, that means going from pleasure to equanimity. But if you're dealing with pain, calming it doesn't necessarily mean making the pain go away. I mean, some pains will go away when you work with the breath, but others are going to stay right there. What you want to calm is the effect of the pain on the mind, and that's going to be through the perception. These repeated perceptions that tell us, we think this is reality, this is the picture that has worked for, for us all along. But you have to ask yourself, where do these maps come from? And many of them came from times when we were pre-verbal. Before we even knew anything about language at all, we were experiencing pain and dealing with it in our own crude way. And we may have learned some better techniques in the meantime, but a lot of times, a lot of the childish perceptions we started out with are still there, like the one that the pain is after you. The pain has invaded your space. And so you're going to work with the perceptions, because these are the things you're clinging to. When we say clinging, it's not like your mind has a hand that is grasping onto something. It's just got certain perceptions and thought fabrications that just go over and over and over again. The ones that we slap onto reality or slap onto experience and say, this is the way things are. And we've never learned to question them. And the reason we hold on to them is in some cases they're very useful, but in others they're not. I mean, identifying with the body helps you to move it around. But then when the pain comes, okay, that perception that you control things in here becomes a problem. And you have to be willing to let it go. And it's there when you run up against the particular sense of self that might, might have gotten lodged in there. And here again, you can say, I don't need that sense of self right now. I can be willing to be a self or a person who's sitting here 
There can be pain anywhere in the body, but I'm not going to be affected by it. I'm going to use the perceptions to help change the relationship to the pain. This is a case of digging out your sense of self when it's pretty obvious, but getting a sense of where it is. It comes from a certain desire, the desire you want the pain to go away. Well, can you change that? Can you learn how to say, I want to be able to sit with the pain and not care whether it goes away or not? That new desire becomes a new you. And so you learn how to identify with the equanimity, or you learn how to identify with the knowing. At that point, you are the awareness. And that's a useful identification to have for that particular purpose. But then as you've dealt with that, then the next question is, okay, is there a potential for suffering there in that identification? Of course there is. Wherever there's identification, there's going to be, there's going to be suffering. We sometimes hear that the reason that clinging is bad is because everything you try to cling to is going to be impermanent. And when the Buddha has you reflect on the drawbacks of clinging, that's one of the main reflections he has you engage in. But even if you try to cling to something that you think is permanent, and it seems to be pretty permanent, there's suffering in the act of clinging. So you want to look for that. So even when things are going your way, there's no pain in the body, the mind is still, and it's just a sense of awareness, very clear, very distinct. You have to look for where is the stress in here too, and it's going to be very subtle. But you have to realize okay, the fact that you're able to maintain that sense of awareness as being something separate, that is a perception that you're holding to. It's clinging there. And the easiest way to see it is that there will be some very slight inconstancy in what seems to be otherwise pretty permanent. And you've got to look for it. This is why if you simply stop with this being the knowing and don't ask these further questions, you're going to miss something really important, i.e. something that the possibility of finding something that really is totally unfabricated. So it may take a while, but always hold that question in mind. wherever anything is held together, even if it's just by a really calm perception. And the perception of just knowing, knowing, knowing doesn't run up against many obstacles. Because no matter what happens, you just, just say, all I want to do is just know, be aware, aware, aware. But you want to look for two things. One is the times when it, you're not just aware, when something leaps out and wants something. Which is why one of the ways of dealing with this particular thing is to sit for longer periods of time so that pain will inevitably come up. And the other time is when you're just there in that sense of awareness, but there's a, a slight wobbling or variation. You check, okay, this too is fabricated. It's being held together by this perception. There's an element of clinging there. So it's not that you're going to be attacking your one sense of self. You're going to be attacking lots of different ones, depending on what the problem is. They're going to have more or less teeth, more fangs or fewer fangs, depending on the extent to which they are running up against an obstacle. And often it's the ones with lots of fangs that you have to deal with first, but then realize, okay, they're the perfectly innocuous ones or seemingly innocuous ones, they're still in there too.
So just remember that fact. Because that's what helps keep you from getting stuck on some of the really nice things that happen along the path. But would deflect you from reaching a goal. 